everybody, my name is Rachel and today I'm going to review The Girl on the Road by Monica Byrne. This is a speculative fiction novel. I hesitate to call it outright science fiction because really the only science fictional element of it is that it's set 50 to 100 years in the future. There is more advanced technology, but it is definitely recognizable from what we have today. Really, this book is about the journeys of two deeply troubled and traumatized young women. This story follows two interlocking storylines. We're first introduced to Mina, who is a 20-something woman living in India. In the beginning of the book, she bursts into this period of manic activity where she's been bitten by a snake. She believes that this organization called Sameta Work is trying to kill her and she needs to get out of the country. Before this traumatic event, Mina and her girlfriend Mohini were planning a trip to Ethiopia to visit the place where Mina's parents were killed before she was born. And when Mina goes off on her rush of manic activity, she goes to Mumbai where she learns about this thing called the trail. The trail is a generator that derives energy from the motion of waves and it looks like a pontoon bridge, thus the name the trail. It spans the Arabian Sea and Mina decides to walk the trail from India to Jabu and then onwards to Ethiopia, ostensibly to continue this journey of seeing where her parents died and seeking closure. The second storyline is that of Mariama, a little girl from Mauritania. She and her mother were slaves who escaped, and at the beginning of Mariama's storyline, she returns to her home to find there a blue snake that tries to bite her. She runs away, as her mother had instructed her to, and stows away on board a truck that two men are going to be driving to Ethiopia. When the men discover her, they realize that they can't take her back to Mauritania, they're too far away, and they do believe her to be an orphan, so they promise her that they will leave her in a safe place once they reach their final destination. On their journey, they also pick up a woman who calls herself Yamaya, and Mariama begins to view Yamaya more and more as a mother figure, which is interesting because Yamaya is actually the name of a West African Orisha or a spirit, which is associated with the ocean and with motherhood. So I think that the concept of Yamaya is a really important thing to remember when you're reading Mina's storyline as well, because she is the person who's walking across the ocean. At some point, you know that these storylines have to connect, they have to intersect at some point, and how this is done is the most awesome part of this book. I thought this was a beautiful book. The stories of these women and their journeys were just captivating and gut-wrenching to me. And especially as I realized more and more as I got into the story that both of these women are running away from something horrible that they're not exactly talking about, and that potentially both of them are mentally ill. You don't necessarily know what truly happened or is happening, which heightens the suspense of what's really going on. For example, you're not entirely sure what's going on with Mina because she does seem to be saying very directly at the beginning of the book that she's in a manic state, that she's not in her right mind, but the fact that she can recognize that she is in a manic state and that she can pull back and say, oh, I think this is a hallucination, makes me, made me wonder at the beginning of the story, is this just a symptom of her being, you know, on practically an adrenaline high because somebody tried to kill her, or is she actually mentally ill? Mariama's mental instability also begins to show by the end of the book, which I can't really tell you about, that would be a massive spoiler, but there was just this moment that leapt off the page at me where I went, holy cow, she is going to do that. I think that both of these women's stories show a lot about their sexualities in these futuristic societies of India and Ethiopia. Both women form some sometimes uncomfortable sexual relationships with men and women and with people who are older and younger than them. And Mina's girlfriend, Mohini, is a male to female transgender who's fully transitioned. And I was very glad to see that Mina is shown as being um, happy with and supportive of Mohini's decision. And at the end of this book, my question is, what is this about? There is so much packed into this book. There's so much that you can pick apart and reinterpret and re-reinterpret, especially if you go back and reread the beginning chapters of the two women's storylines after you finish the book, and you can reinterpret the events and come to different conclusions about what was actually happening. For me, I think it was enough just to read the story to see how these women were connected and to see how the journey shapes them. The end destination wasn't necessarily the most important part. The journey was to see how their need for parents and for mother figures develops and how these two women want to be complete whole people and they have to go on these journeys to be that. 
My only criticism of this book is that I felt like the ending could have been explained a little bit more clearly. I don't demand that every little thing in a book be explained to me very, very clearly, but in this case I felt like the end strayed a little bit from the much clearer descriptive style and the first part. It just went into a much more quick, symbolic, figurative stream of events that were very much up for interpretation, and I was unclear about exactly what was said and what was done and some of the decisions made in the last couple of pages. That's the only reason why I didn't give this five stars. It just could have been played out a little bit more. This is a really thought-provoking novel. I would highly recommend it. I don't think that I would recommend this book for anybody who is uncomfortable reading about some slightly graphic, slightly disturbing sexual relationships. There are a couple moments of abuse and rape, but other than that, I think it is well worth reading despite some of the difficult subject matter. I think it's a great story. It has a great setting, some really interesting concepts, and I definitely think that this is one of the best debut novels I have ever read. That is it for my review of The Girl on the Road by Monica Byrne. If you've read this book or maybe a book that has similar themes, I would love to hear from you in the comments down below. And thank you very much for watching and I'll talk to you guys again in my next video. Bye!